Hi, this is Scott Bacaric with Verde Property Management with today's Landlord Tip. With us is Brad Sheppy with Minnesota Landlord Law. How are you doing, Brad? I'm doing great today. Thank you, Scott. Hey, thanks for being here. So, today we're going to talk about three mistakes on your current lease that will cost you money if you don't correct them. So, Brad's going to help navigate us through these choppy waters. So, Brad, what's, what's the first one? Well, the first one I, I will have to take one step back, which is, which form are you using and where did you get that form? Ooh, so good, good clarification. There are leases that people have from bigger pockets or they use the Minnesota State Bar lease or they use the Minnesota multi housing lease or they use a lease from one of their attorneys and there's a realtor form. Right. So out the gates you have to you have to understand which lease you have. And I would say the the more pro landlord lease would be the Minnesota multi housing lease because they're they're also tracking uh, legislative advances in landlord tenant law and making sure that their latest document is current. So that being said, um, first step is to understand which lease you have. And um, I'm a little bit biased. I have my own lease form that, right. I, that I, I believe is the best, but there's there's lots of other documents. Humbly, right? Humbly. Humbly. Yeah, sorry, yes, right. Um, but that being said, there's a few things that in the residential lease that should not be in there. Off the top of my head is one, it's about, it's it's in most documents, but you should check on your specific document, which is the non-waiver partial payment language. Mm. Meaning if you accept partial rent from a tenant, meaning less than the total month's rent, um, can you still evict that tenant for the total amount of rent due or because that language is not in your lease, are your hands tied and you can only evict for whatever partial rent is then after that. And so it, if, if you have a tenant who owes a lot of money, it is a very key provision to make sure you have in your lease. So number Give one- Give us an example of that. Like, so say yep. someone missed their January payment, but then came in and paid 200 bucks on February 7th. So technically, they owe for January, February. They gave me two hundred bucks. What does that scenario look like then? Well, the scenario is is that they're still going to owe the money. It's still a debt. The question is is whether or not um, you can file an eviction for the total amount of rent due, which they then would have to pay to redeem and stay in their apartment. Okay. And so, by accepting less than the total due and not having that language, let's say you file an eviction for the total amount due. Um, that tenant would have a defense because they're likely their legal aid attorney who is now, they're, they're sitting at most courthouses and making themselves available, would say, aha, this, land, this eviction has, is filed for the wrong amount. And depending on your facts and circumstances, it could range from being dismissed to the tenant having to pay less money. So it's really about um, just being smart about non-waiver provisions where it permits a landlord to accept partial payment of rent due and still evict for the total amount. Okay. Kind of legalese there, but it's important. That's definitely one of the top ones and it comes up often in housing court where you see landlords doing their own evictions and not right. understanding the law. Um, right. Another one is attorney's fees. Um, so number two is attorney's fees. It's you. One generally assumes that if the tenant breaches or defaults in the lease, then I, the landlord, want to be entitled to all my attorney's fees because, gosh darn it, um, I'm having to pay out of pocket because of the tenant. Right. 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 But the reality is, there's a couple of things that that come into play. Uh, one is is that a lot of a lot of let's say for socioeconomic reasons, many tenants are are. are you'd call judgment proof. They really don't have a lot of money. And even if that attorney's fees provisions in there, you're really not going to be financially much better off. And it really isn't much of a stick. And practically the reason you don't want that in there is that it, it actually, because of a statute in Minnesota under 504B, it goes both ways. So if you have language in your lease that says, I, the landlord, am entitled to attorney's fees, the tenant is as well. And so let's say now you have some minor technical issue with um, something that you've done. You now have um, a rent escrow action filed by the tenant on you. Then the tenant 
they even might be represented by legal aid, and let's say they win their case, you're going to be out potentially thousands of additional more dollars because the tenant brought a case and the tenant succeeded and you owe attorney's fees. And so you, and it could be a, something that's a minor issue of whether or not there was mold. So attorney's fees, my recommendation is just strike it entirely. No attorney's fees to either party. Um, and the last one would just be default language, right? So default language means if a residential tenant is not paying rent or is doing something that they shouldn't be doing, um, mm -hmm. they have unlawful occupants, if you got your lease somewhere online, um, it may have it may give the tenant more time or more rights than the Minnesota state law gives them. So you shouldn't have any language in your default language that, for instance, would give the tenant rights to cure or three days, three additional days to pay. It, you basically should just say if the rent is not paid on time, the landlord has all rights and remedies, including the ability to evict. Just period. It doesn't need to grant tenant additional rights um, if they don't pay on time or if there's a material default. So, for instance, you've got a tenant who, you know, they've got their 15 best friends staying there. Yeah. You know, like some leases would allow them, like, what, three to five days to cure that, meaning they could say they moved out and what you just start over then or yeah well so that that's that's an example of where sometimes when you have you mentioned unlawful occupants and so that often is litigated in housing court and is tough to prove right right who's right. who's there how do we know um this is my cousin v Vinny yeah. coming from uh, alabama right yeah new, so, new jersey probably but yeah so the key the key thing there i think is um we, i can as an attorney get excited and get off topic there but the key focus there for the default language is if there's a cure period, it should be really short. It shouldn't give them a lot of time. It should be a very short notice provision. Um, in some cases, uh, material breach, just the existence <coughs> of, of, some, of, an, of evidence of a material breach is enough for an immediate eviction. So just be careful of your lease granting your tenant additional time to cure that, um, frankly, you sh you're, you're, it should not be in there. Okay. Wow, a lot there. There's a lot there. So, so Brad, if someone wants to, you know, really, you know, peel back the onion here sure. and, and get in touch with you, what's the best way to do that? Thank you, Scott. The best way to contact me is either my cell phone or website. The cell phone is 612-770-7447. I also accept texts on that line, but if I don't know who you are, throw in your name. And my website is minnesotalandlordlaw.com, all spelled out. And you, there's a little bit of information there, and you can also schedule a time um, by clicking a new client, which will bring you to my calendar to schedule a call with me. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Brad. And I'm Scott Picard with Verde Property Management. Like always, if you want to get a hold of us, the number is 612-600-8888, 612-600-8888. Eight, 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 call or text or online 24-7 at Verde dash realestate.com. We hope this content has been valuable. And like always, if we can be a further service, please let us know. Thank you.